Hello, how are you doing? And welcome back to the channel. Why are Ireland so good? That's what I'm gonna be talking about in this video. Now, I know that they still have to do the job against England this weekend in the Six Nations and secure that Grand Slam, but frankly, I think it would be It'd be one of rugby's great upsets, certainly one of the Six Nations' great upsets if England were able to upset the party. I don't think that is going to happen. I think England will lose. I think Ireland will win the Grand Slam relatively easily. So I thought in this video I would pay tribute to this Ireland team a little bit and just explain why I think they are just such a good team at this moment in time, why I think when they do win that Grand Slam, as I believe they will, why they will be remembered as one of the great Grand Slam winning teams in Six Nations era. Drop a comment down below and let me know what you think of everything I go through in this video, what you think of this Irish team, and also subscribe to the channel and like the video as well if you haven't already. All right, let's get into it. So the first thing that I've written down in terms of why this Ireland team is so good is strength in depth. And I think that was probably best exhibited at Murrayfield against Scotland at the weekend, losing both of their hookers, Key and Healy, who some people have been talking about, should he no longer be part of the Ireland setup? But part of the reason he's been there is because of the way he's able to play across that front row. Normally, both sides of the scrum. He gets put in at hooker in the scrummaging duties, and they also then have Josh van der Fleer there who's able to throw in at the line out. I'm sure many, certainly a lot of the Irish fans watching would have seen the quotes this week and after that game of how he took up golf a couple of years ago and now his handicap's kind of in the, the low digits. Um, and he's obviously just a ridiculous athlete, isn't he? World Player of the Year. But to have him throwing in at the line out and throwing in well as well um, just showed, I think, the strength and depth that they have. And we can expand that further as well. If we want to look at some of the injuries they've suffered in terms of Ty Byrne, Ian Henderson won't be available for the match against England. I think there's still guys that can come in there and do a job. Gary Ringrose, I don't know what the update is on him. We wish him all the very best. It was a nasty looking injury, wasn't it? But Robbie Henshaw's returned to the team. Don't know what the situation is with McCloskey, but he had started in the Six Nations up to that point. They have options there and they have really strong options. Jack Conan at number eight, a British and Irish Lions, started for the Lions and he hasn't necessarily been starting for Ireland in this Six Nations. Just everywhere you look, I think there are options across this Ireland team at the moment. It's incredibly ominous if you're not an Irish rugby fan, if you support any of the other nations. But yeah, I think certainly that strength in depth is a major reason why this Irish team is so good, but it's by no means the only reason. I wanted to then mention the continuity in this Irish attack. I just think it looks so impressive. I can't remember the last time I saw a rugby team attack in this way, and it just looks so good. And what I mean by that is you almost feel like it doesn't matter when Ireland have the ball, it doesn't matter where they are on the pitch, it doesn't matter how they've got that ball, whether it's turnover, whether they've been building the phases, wherever it is, you just get the sense that everyone knows what they have to do within that Irish system. And I think you're seeing that. It looks so effortless. They're making it look so easy. The lines they run, the options they have out the back if they want to pull the pass back to Sexton and work it to the outside. There's so much to do with this Irish attack, which is so complicated, but so, so good. And you have to give the coaches a huge amount of credit for that. I think Andy Farrell, uh, Mike Catt, uh, all the other guys kind of in that system have done a brilliant job, haven't they, of, of building this Irish team? Because there were... Not not massively vocal voices against Farrell, but there was a point, wasn't there, after the 2019 World Cup where I think people weren't quite sure what direction they were heading in, but they've built, they've built, they've built, and they've got to this point now where they are playing some really brilliant rugby. I think at this moment in time, and I include all teams in the world in this, including the Southern Hemisphere sides, at this moment in time, if every single team is playing their absolute best at the moment, I think it's Ireland that are the best team. And I know they're ranked number one in the world, but I don't think there's anyone else that can match them if everyone's playing at their best. And I think in part, that is down to their attacking game. They make meters, they have options. There's such continuity, they're so dangerous. I've loved watching their attacking game this Six Nations. Also, I wanted to mention their problem-solving ability. It kind of goes back to what I just mentioned as well, in terms of they had that plan, Kean Healy went to hooker, van der Fleer throwing in at the line-out. How many other teams would have thought about that? I think there are so many international teams that if that happens to them, they are stuck. They don't know what to do. They're going to uncontested scrums. They might have someone throwing in at the line-out, but have they practiced it? I just think they're prepared, this Ireland team. And also problem-solving ability in terms of not just coming over that sort of very obvious adversity, but coming over different momentum within matches. Even that game against Scotland, they were under the pump at times in that first half. They had the one-point lead at half-time because they held Scotland at bay right at the end of the opening 40 minutes. 
And then they were able to pull away from them. I think it's always a great... It's a sign of a great team are the teams that are able to stay in the fight, are able to stay in the game even when momentum isn't going their way and still able to come out of the victory. I remember it's what was said often about the 2003 England team in that they could often be in quite tight games for an hour, but the final 20 minutes they would pull away. Same with the great New Zealand teams we've seen. How often was it the case that they would just blow teams away in the final part of games. They would take their opportunities. They would win games late. In fact, Ireland themselves were on the wrong end of that. I remember years ago in Dublin when New Zealand scored a try in the final play of the game to, to win when Ireland looked like they may well be getting a famous victory. Just that ability to problem solve, that ability to stay in the fight is so key. It's such a intangible, uh, it's so hard to kind of grip on why a team can do that and why some can't but this Irish team absolutely can and it's a massive reason of why they're so good at the moment. The final point I wanted to mention here was belief. Think about where this Ireland team have been in that they've won a series away in New Zealand when they had to come from a game behind even though I actually thought in that first game in that series they played some really good stuff the scoreboard just ended up getting away from them certainly in the opening 15-20 minutes Ireland played some really good stuff so they've come from behind to win a test series in New Zealand for the first time they've climbed the rankings to get themselves to the number one side in the world which when you look at a country of Ireland's size of Ireland's resources it's you know comparable to what New Zealand did when New Zealand were the best team in the world for so long. But you look at the size of the nation, you kind of wonder how is this possible? But So they've been able to do that. They've also beaten everyone else before them, haven't they? They've beaten South Africa. They've beaten Australia. They've now beaten France in this Six Nations for the first time. They won away at Twickenham last year. They have kind of conquered all before them, this Irish team. And that, I think, is giving them a huge amount of belief. And belief goes a long way in sport. The psychological part of the game... For this island side to know on their day they can beat anyone. I guess the big question mark later this year is to be what happens when they come up possibly against France. If they were to meet France in France in the World Cup in a knockout stage, something like that. I think that would be intriguing because that's maybe just the one hurdle they, they haven't got over. It was a brilliant game in the Stade de France a year ago, wasn't it? Um, in that Six Nations when France won. Ireland, I thought, played some good stuff, but ultimately that was probably France at their best, just getting the better of Ireland. But I think overall there's a huge amount of belief in this Irish side. So those are the four points I've made. The strength in depth, the continuity of their attack, the problem-solving ability, and the belief. And Andy Farrell and those coaches, as I've mentioned already, have just done a brilliant job of getting this team ticking, of getting them to the point where you just feel like they can beat anyone. As I've said already, I think they will win. I think they'll win comfortably, actually, against England this weekend. I think it's a shame that Super Saturday is not more exciting. Maybe... I could do a video on that later on this week on Friday or something like that. Because I think really we are kind of waiting for Ireland's coronation, in all honesty. But as I said at the start of the video, drop a comment down below. First of all, Ireland fans, do you agree with me? What's the mood in Ireland? Because I can imagine if it was England, if it was the opposite way around, I'll be looking at this right now and thinking, you just never know, you've got to be really careful. But as an Englishman looking at this game, you'll win it easily. I honestly really believe that. So what's the mood in Ireland? Are people particularly confident or is that little bit of trepidation? And what do you make of this Irish team? What is so impressive about them? Do you agree with me that they are, if they do win the Grand Slam, the best Grand Slam winning team I think we've probably seen since the 2003 England team? I'm going to stick it out there. I think that's how good they are. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, and I'll see you in the next one.